You know, I've always said the best sequel is the one that pays absolutely no attention to the fact that there was a movie that came before it. Here we go. Hello again and welcome back to Mimsy Park for a new episode of Manic Movie Reviews that has absolutely nothing to do with Disney. We're coming off of the Disney live action remake series, always an ongoing series as long as they keep releasing dumpster fire live action remakes. If you haven't seen that series yet, I've got them all listed. I need to actually make a playlist for those. I'll probably do that at some point because it is its own series within the context of manic movie reviews. So, currently waiting on the movie after Mulan to come out. As I discussed in the last episode of manic movie reviews, I will not be doing Mulan in regards to what's going on over in Hong Kong. I wanted to go as far away from Disney as possible while still staying in the realm of crappy, stupid movies that really have no purpose of being on this earth. And with that introduction, I bring to you the Boy 2, Brahms. This is the sequel to 2016's The Boy, which was actually a horror movie that I did not hate, or at least I don't remember hating. I remember hating the ending. If you have not seen that movie, go watch that movie. I'm going to keep this as spoiler free as possible, but this is going to be based off the assumption that you have already seen The Boy. So there will be some spoiler alerts for the first the boy. There's also going to be some spoilers for this one, so just a heads up on that in advance because some of the issues I had were a little more specific, but we're going on to the second boy, but still the same boy. Except not really the same boy, because this is a movie that pays absolutely no attention to the movie before it in pretty much every regard, down to like its core element. In this one, the Brahms doll is haunted by a spirit or demon. This is a ghost story, whereas the original was the boy operating under the assumption or the guise of being a ghost story, and then you find out at the end that he's actually just been living in the walls the whole time, which is actually where I started to hate that movie because the whole movie was great and it built up and you finally find out that, I mean, I guess I didn't hate it, it just, it did not go the direction I was wanting it to go. But at the end of The Boy, we see him fixing the doll and that's how the movie ends. The first one ends with him fixing the doll, having survived all of that and everything. In this one, it's just the doll. It's just the doll. Everything about this movie is really kind of mediocre at best. And at no point was I invested in really anything that was going on except the ending credits. I was really invested in those showing up so I could get this experience over with. He's haunted by something in this one which doesn't make any sense at all. Makes absolutely no sense in the context of the world that it's in. What is with the psycho mural? Don't get me wrong, I think it's cool. No child should have to go to bed with those creatures in that mural looming over them every night. I don't know what was going on with that. It's the coolest part of this movie, to be honest, and probably the freakiest, because most of this movie is not creepy or freaky or suspenseful. This movie relies pretty heavily on jump scares. There are a lot of jump scares in this movie. The effects in this movie are, eh. I feel like Annabelle, and I really like the Annabelle series. I feel like Annabelle has really driven the whole doll being creepy thing. I think they've really driven that into the ground. Or it might be the fact that this doll seems to be just the boy version of Annabelle. And so that might be why when the eyes start moving, it wasn't, there's nothing practical about it either. It's very obviously CGI'd eyes that are moving, which you could have made a puppet. The bokeh or blur effects around that they use randomly in this movie, it's supposed to be either like a transitional effect or denoting what's going on. Like the scene after Brahms gets off the couch and she goes looking for him and he locks the door. Like that whole thing where she realizes Jude is right there, there's that whole camera effect and it's just really, really on the nose. Another thing this movie does is it relies heavily on the characters being stupid and ignorant and naive. And a big part of that is when she finds the drawings. Like when she finds the drawings, it's very like, 
she tries to hide it and she tries to not act concerned and I'm sure it's because she's scared or whatever. My mom would have straight up been like, what is wrong with you? What the hell are these? But there's none of that in this. There's absolutely none of that in this. In this, it's very much just, we're gonna kind of sweep this under the rug. We're gonna act like it's not a big deal because it's not a big deal if I don't want it to be a big deal. It may again be because the mother seems afraid of the son or no, 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 no. What is this? This movie is just absolutely full of plot holes. Crazy Joe is a great plot hole. The scene where Brahms is putting the doll back together. Now that scene is actually Crazy Joe. So we're being told that that wasn't even really Brahms all along, which again, doesn't make sense. It's just, it's one of those things where you just, you just leave that alone. Just leave it alone. This thing didn't make sense from the very beginning when he's haunted. That doll was made as a representation of the boy. And so this whole thing that they do in the sequel where, oh, this doll has been involved in all of these from like the 1800s through recently. It, do it doesn't make sense. Again, nothing about this movie in the context of the original makes any sense at all. Not at all, not even one bit, except the fact that the doll's back. Oh, and they use the house. The original house which i found online for less than four million dollars so if you've got about four million dollars you can buy the house from the boy i don't know why you'd do that based off the movie but the house is pretty cool crazy joe is another thing that just it just it doesn't make sense and the reason it doesn't make sense is because brahms at the end of the original is the one repairing the doll in this one it was crazy joe apparently he wasn't a part of the original at all he's not in the original so there's that part the other part is even if the doll is haunted, the whole premise behind Brahms is to get a new family, I guess, because last time it wasn't about having a family with a sociopathic son that had been marred and scarred and you didn't want him out. No, now it's about this doll that wants a family, I guess. Which, again, it would make sense. You could even be like, oh, he actually died and his soul or his spirit's in the... Nope, not at all. Brahms is mentioned. Like, the actual boy Brahms is mentioned and then he's not mentioned. And then from then on out, he's just a spirit. I've never seen a sequel try to be a standalone as much as this movie tries to be a standalone. You can't do that with a sequel. It just doesn't make sense. People are coming into a sequel with an automatic expectation in relation to the original and this does nothing like that it has, does absolutely nothing like that except the house and the doll itself everything else is just like now nah, we're just gonna do what we want basically now there are a couple fun moments in this movie because you can have bad horror movies you can have horror movies that just don't make any sense and they're no good as far as a movie goes but they're still a lot of fun there's a lot of bad horror movies out there that are still a lot of fun pick something from the 70s and 80s basically I really highly recommend watching the first one. I really highly recommend avoiding this one just entirely. Unless you just have time to kill and you want to watch a new movie because it just came out on Tuesday, then yeah, go ahead. If you're a collector like me, yeah, go ahead, but don't watch it. I mean, it's it really is. It's a total waste of time. It, it, as far as a sequel goes, it's a total waste of time. As far as a movie viewing experience, for the sake of watching a movie, okay. For the sake of watching a good movie, absolutely hell no not. The big reveal of Jude in the mask in the basement at the old house, the only thing dramatic about it is the music playing. It has got to be one of the most underwhelming reveals I have seen in a very long time because it's this big like dramatic music and then it's just him peeking around the corner. The problem is he's already worn the mask he's already a part in this movie where he wears the mask and now you've got him doing it again like it's this big thing we already saw that it's not creepy anymore it's just not creepy anymore other than the jump scares nothing about this movie is scary or creepy there's a couple of movements that make you cringe a little bit i won't go into that too much because that's kind of a build up to a really cool scene but i don't really feel like these are spoilers because there's nothing good to spoil Anyway, guys, I hope you did enjoy this review of 2020's The Boy 2 Brahms. I hope it did help you in saving some money on a Blu-ray or DVD. I don't know if there's a 4K edition of this. I can't imagine why they'd invest in a 4K version of this, but maybe they did. Who knows? But if you guys are liking these reviews, especially now that we're kind of getting out of the Disney series, go ahead and leave me a comment. Leave me a thumbs up. Leave me a thumbs down if you want to. 
do leave me a subscription if you are enjoying these videos. And as I've said before, movie suggestions or anything like that, put them down in the comments. I will watch these movies. I will review them harshly as I normally do. I promise when I see a movie that I really, really like, we'll go ahead and review it and why it's good. And we've done that before, but I feel like it's more fun. I get to let out more energy whenever the movies aren't that good, as in the case with The Boy 2. Anyway, guys, like I said, comment, like, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, yada, yada, yada. I will see you guys next time.